So GitHub code spaces, especially in this pandemic, when we are not really working in our offices. And you can imagine that there are a lot of teams that are working on all kinds of things all over the world. And you don't have like access to your office where, you know, especially the IT department that's going to set up your machine just the way you need it in order to, to develop code. So GitHub code spaces, what it helps with is you have your development environment in the cloud. You have your VS code in the cloud. That's pretty much what it is. And you have it running in a browser. So you can develop from your iPad, from your browser. And what I'm going to show you today is how to create a code space in the cloud, but there is more that you can do with that. If you download and install the preview version of Visual Studio 2019, you can actually link Visual Studio 2019 to an existing code space. In other words, VS Code in the cloud. And you can also do that with a VS Code on your host machine. You can link to a VS Code in the cloud, or you can work in the cloud altogether. This GitHub code spaces, at the moment, it is in preview. You can sign up to this preview version of code spaces by going to this link. And I signed up and with the preview version, I'm allowed only to have two code spaces at any one time. And these code spaces, they actually run in a container in the cloud. So let's get started. In order to show you how this works, I'm going to go to my GitHub account and create a repository. Okay. Now the repository I'm going to create, I'm going to call it MVC on code spaces. I'm going to create an ASP.NET Core MVC app, create the repository. Okay. So now I have a repo. So here I'm going to make a directory called MVC on code spaces. Let me go into that directory and create an MVC app. And at the moment, if I go .NET minus minus list SDKs, of course, I have .NET 5.0. I'm going to use .NET 5.0. So I'm going to go .NET new MVC, create a new app. And there's no need for me to show you what this does because most people they've played with .NET new MVC. So, you know, let us just push it to GitHub. I should create a git ignore. So I'm going to go .NET new git ignore. It's going to add for me a git ignore. So let's do the git in it and all that stuff in it. Git add and git commit minus M. I'll just say first commit. And then I'll just take these instructions here to push them onto my repo. Copy, come here and push this. Okay. So now if I refresh this, you know, there, I, there goes, I've got my code up here. Okay. What's new is this. If you click down on this, you see open with code spaces. This is new. Click on this. It says you don't have any active code spaces. Do you want to create a new one? I'll say, yes, I want to create a new one. So it's going to take my source code and run it in a code space, which is pretty much VS code in the cloud. And you know what? Wait until everything settles down. It regurgitates for a, a time. And I suggest just leave it until you get a statement at the very end. It says it wants to access my GitHub account. I'll say yes. You just have to wait until you hear this finished. And it says configuring code spaces, required assets, yes. So this is for sure familiar to many of you. You've got here VS Code running in the cloud. And if you want to go to your file system, here it is. I'm going to enable autosave so that it's on, file autosave, and so on and so forth. Okay. And you can add extensions and all kinds of things here. So what else can we do? We can go into a terminal window here and let's find out what SDKs are on this. I'm going to go .NET and you've got 2.1, 3.1, 5.0, and it's all, it all works. You might want to build your app here because this is your app running in the cloud. So I can say .NET build. How about if you want to run it? So I'm going to hit control F5 here to see if this runs. And of course, the first question is how the heck can it run 
in the cloud, if it's going to use localhost 5000 or localhost HPS 5001, let's find out. I'm hitting control F5 and there you go, it is running and look at that. What it did was it did port forwarding to this location and this is your app running in the cloud. Now let's see if we can make some changes. So I can come here, stop and maybe do a a minor change and see what how how we can refresh it. If I go under share, let's say layouts, I'm going to do a minor change just so that I can see a, something different in the UI. So let's go to this container, this container div, and I'm going to add a gold background. Okay. So this is saved automatically. I think it is because I made file auto save. So let's come here. Let's run it again. And then here it is. It's working. It, it ref Actually, I could have come here and refreshed too. So it seems to be working. Let's look at the changes we have. So it added a bunch of JSON files for launching. These are sort of configuration files used by VS Code. And of course, I did a change for layout.cshtml because this is just like working in your own development environment. You need to push this because it's telling you that there are three changes that were made. So let me say here, stage all the changes and I have to have a message here. Let me say changed layout or something, enter this and push. Everything's gone to the source control. When you're done with your code space and you don't need it, you actually need to delete it. So I'll go to my github.com and you see now there's a tab called code spaces. Once you're accepted to have this feature, you will see that tab available in your GitHub account. So if you come here, code spaces, there you go. You can come here and delete it. You don't need it anymore. I'm going to delete it. Okay. And it's gone. Our comfort zone as developers is our computer using our operating system and sitting on the, at the desk where we're accustomed to coding. If you have a code space running in the cloud that you configure just the way you want it, then, you know, you can work from any location you like, especially if you want to bring a new developer on board, it's beautiful for onboarding new staff where you can set up for them this code space. By the way, there is more to code space than what I have covered because you can configure your code space to install a specific version of .NET Core, to install specific extensions. There are many, many things that you can do. And I suggest you go and look at the, the documentation. What we did today was we looked at the default code space, which is really a .NET Core code space. But suppose you want to have a code space that's using say Node, or you want a React environment, or you want a Vue environment and so on you can actually create a code space for a specific environment and then have your developers use that template to create for themselves just the environment that you want them to work in. So there's more to code spaces than just what I'm covering today. Yes, uh, Eris, is that possible to install third part CLI apps? Yes, you can use GitHub code spaces for other technologies other than .NET Core. There are templates for PHP, for Node, for React, for all kinds of things. This is pretty much what I wanted to cover. I hope that you found this useful.